The world of medicine during the 18th century started off poor but developed significantly as the decades went on. At the beginning of the 1700s, if a person caught a disease like scurvy, smallpox, or scarlet fever, their prognosis was always very low and they weren't expected to get better and survive. Rather, they were often taken to hospitals to die. Hospitals at the time had no sanitation and often so cramped that they assigned six patients to one bed. The air was polluted and transferred contagious diseases, thus serving as more of a distributor of illnesses rather than a place to be cured. In continuation with society's ranks, the world of medicine also had tiers of practitioners. The top tier consisted of physicians who were university graduates. They had to receive a license from the Royal College of Physicians and work in Latin rather than their common vernaculars. It was rare to become a physician because they had to be socially elite nobles and only 100 people were licensed with this title by the end of the century. The second tier was for the surgeons who had a dual occupation, also serving as barbers. They bled patients by slitting their wrists and letting their blood drain out. This was believed to reduce fevers and combat illnesses at the time. Surgeons needed clinical experience at the Royal College of Surgeons in order to obtain a license. There was no knowledge of painkillers or infections, so surgeries were painful and unsanitary. After the surgeons and barbers split into two occupations, the surgeons began to dissect bodies and look at human anatomy, a huge advancement in the medical community. The last tier consisted of apothecaries, midwives, and faith healers who learned from mentors rather than a higher education. They were much more common and primarily served the commoners with herbs, potions, and homemade remedies. Scotland was the center of medicine development during the 18th century. The University of Edinburgh served as the leading academic center for medicine in Europe, and many high-ranking prestigious practitioners came from Britain to learn here. Some important figures in the world of medicine were John Brown, William Cullen, Giovanni Battista Morgagni, and Lady Mary Wortley Montagu. Brown was a propounder of the excitability theory of medicine, which classifies diseases according to whether they had an over- or under-stimulating effect on the body. He believed that there are only two types of diseases, sthenic and asthenic, and two treatments, stimulative and sedative. His chief remedies were alcohol and opium. Colin was appointed to the chair of the Institute's theory of medicine and eventually became sole professor of medicine. In medicine, he taught that life was a function of nervous energy and that muscle was a continuation of nerve. He also was the first to teach in English rather than Latin. Morgagni established his reputation as an accurate anatomist, a founder of morbid anatomy. His work treats the morbid conditions of the entire body and contains records of 640 dissections. He was the first to demonstrate the necessity of basing diagnoses, prognosis, and treatment on comprehensive knowledge of an anatomical condition. Lastly, perhaps one of the most important figures not only for the world of medicine, but also for the advancement of women in society, was Lady Mary Wortley Montagu. She popularized the highly significant medical advance, vaccination. Smallpox, disfiguring and often fatal, was widely prevalent. Inoculation, which had been practiced in the East, was introduced in England by Lady Montagu. She observed the practice in Turkey, where it produced a mild form of disease, thus securing immunity with minimal danger. Additionally, women were needed in the world of medicine to serve as midwives and wet nurses for the wealthy who felt it beneath them to take care of their own infants. It wasn't until the end of the 18th century that male doctors began to assist midwives with delivering babies.